refugee organizations say hopes that de deportation threats would act as a de de deterrent are misguided. The rise in dangerous channel crossings is unacceptable. Not only are they an overt abuse of our immigration laws, but they also impact on the UK taxpayer. Tax 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 payer. As of 2023, according to Amnesty.org, there are over 26 million refugees worldwide, half of them being children. Out of the 26 million worldwide, only 15% of them are hosted in wealthy countries, meaning the remaining 85% are hosted in developing countries such as Jordan, Turkey and Pakistan. Although they are getting their basic needs fulfilled at these refugee camps, these placements are temporary. Here, the conditions are barely livable, but at least they are alive. With their future in question, why is there such a refugee crisis? I think it's pretty obvious. So it's clear there needs to be a new global plan with international cooperation and a fair share of responsibilities. Because keeping people out of the country doesn't really target the issue itself, does it? The Dominican government is simply not equipped to offer refuge to so many needy people. But maybe if someone raised the question to the wealthier governments, it might get discussed. Never mind, it seems like they have more important things to worry about. We have to re-globalize this world. Strength and cooperation where we maintain the necessary framework and who masters those technologies in some way will be the master of the world. Some of the many technologies the WEF have advocated for include technology that fuses physical, digital and biological identity, digital identity or digital ID systems that determine access to services, microchips for children and automated artificial intelligence systems that sense a hate speech and misinformation. Now, we can't single-handedly solve this issue as that's what people in power are for, right? I order the Pentagon to shoot it down on Wednesday as soon as possible. But there must be something we can do to get people to start thinking about it. So this is where I can do my part. I don't have the reach of a massive audience or a whole country behind my word. What I found out over the years is being a filmmaker, you can capture this new angle which otherwise doesn't see the light of day. Yes, I could hand out some flyers and ask for donations or I could provide a link that helps a charity that houses refugees. And the truth is, those things are already out there and there's nothing stopping anyone helping if they really wanted to. But I think I've got something slightly better. So here in Tenerife, I've managed to get in contact with a refugee called Usman who's had to flee his country, leaving his friends and family back home in Senegal. I'm hoping that showing what one out of millions of refugees looks like will help visualize how large the crisis actually is. What was the journey here like? My voyage was very difficult. We had 15 days of traveling and it was very terrible. What were you doing before you had to come to Tenerife? Well, I was a student. But uh, there in my country there's no work. Unemployment in Senegal is about 42% and about 13% of them are used with a degree in higher education. But exactly 0% of them are qualified to work in the nation's professional sector. And the explanation as to why? 
leaves young people with more questions than answers. And have you found work here? Yes, here I can find work. And that would help my family, my brothers. So, what's the situation with your family? You see, my family, I'm the only one who is here. What do you miss most about your old life? Well, I miss my family, a mother, father, and all my brothers. How do they feel about you being out here alone? They feel happy because they believe that I have died in the, in the journey. About 100 migrants are missing in the Mediterranean off Libya. They're both capsized during the perilous journey from North Africa to a better life in Europe. We were 15 days in the middle of the ocean without being able to communicate either by phone, but not, not with anybody. My mother told me not to risk my life, but now she is happy because I'm okay. One thing that needs to be addressed is that this is a refugee that has actually achieved their goal of finding a new life. The torment and suffering is something that the people in charge surely just can't understand because I don't see anyone who would purposefully leave their whole entire life behind unless they were forced to do so. When I said goodbye to my mother, I didn't know whether I would see her again. Well, do you think they'd ever be able to come over here to be with you again? Yes. Them? No. They're not going to make the journey over the sea as I did. Outside a hotel giving refuge to asylum seekers, the message from protesters is clear. You're not welcome here. Get them out! Get them out! It was said to have begun as a peaceful rally at the Sweets Hotel in Knowsley on Merseyside. Within just a couple of hours, it turned ugly. Low GMH. Absolutely loads. With the refugees inside the hotel, the protesters turned their anger on the police. What is a message to the people who are sceptical of the reasons for refugees coming to their country? Well, I would like that people know that I come to Europe in order to make something of my life, to study and to work. I don't want to just be there without doing anything. Is there anything you would like to say to other refugees like yourself? I would say to him that he, he should believe in himself, that he should think about what he is doing because it is a great risk to his life. But if he's a strong person and wants to come and is ready to come, but I would not recommend the way I come, which is a very, very difficult journey. What's the future looking like for you? Now, I'm here. And I don't want to go back home with empty hands. So here we are at the end of the road, a position that millions of others would trade places for in a heartbeat. The fact that something as simple as a peaceful environment being so hard to attain for people like Usman really shows the magnitude of the situation. The most basic things we all take for granted is all these refugees want. These people just deserve human rights, so why are so many denied? Could there be other deeper rooted social issues surrounding the refugee crisis? Could there be an agenda we are not aware of? Or could there be a logical reason for keeping innocent life in war-torn countries? What do you think?